Montessori. Today we're going to be reading two books and both of these books are going to be about animals from Africa. The first one we're going to read is A Zebra's World. And this book is actually really neat because it's going to tell us all different kinds of facts about zebras. The sun rises over the African plain. Zebras wake up and sniff the fresh morning air. There is a new member of the herd. She's just a few hours old. Soon the baby zebra and her mother will join the rest of the herd in their daily search for grass. A newborn zebra weighs between 60 and 70 pounds and is about three feet tall. Here's the little baby zebra. The baby zebra bends her knees and struggles to stand. She takes a few wobbly steps. Soon she gets her balance. Now the young zebra can see the other zebras in the herd. They are looking for something to eat. A newborn zebra is able to stand within 20 minutes of birth. The young zebra is hungry too. She nestles under her mother's warm belly and drinks some milk. The mother zebra keeps her baby close. She will not let any other zebras come near until the baby is a few days old. Zebras share the African plains with giraffes, elephants, and many, and many other animals. So here she's underneath her mother getting some milk. Some of the other females in the herd have babies too. Each mother knows her own baby by its smell and the pattern of its stripes. The leader of the herd is a full-grown male zebra. He protects the herd. He makes sure that no one wanders too far. He chases away other zebras that are not in his herd. Plain zebras usually live in family herds of five to 20 animals. Each herd has one, ad one adult male plus several females and their foals. The young zebra is now three weeks old. She eats grass for the first time. She bites off the blades with sharp front teeth. Once a day, the young zebra and her mother follow the herd to a watering hole. The thirsty zebras lap up the cool water. While some drink, others keep an eye out for danger. A full-grown zebra can eat up to 20 pounds of food a day. That's a lot of food. The young zebra gallops fast to keep up. Her hooves pound the hard ground. As the herd flees, the zebras call to one another. They make sure that no one gets left behind. Day and night, zebras must look out for lions, wild dogs, cheetahs, and other meat eaters. Zebras can outrun most predators. So if they can outrun a lion, they're pretty fast. The young zebra is now four months old. She plays with the other young zebras in the herd. The zebras push and shove one another. They race across the plain. When they get tired, they lay down to rest. Exercise helps the young zebra's muscles grow strong. The young zebras were born in the rainy season. Now the rain has stopped. Water holes are drying up. It is time for the zebras to go to the river to find more water. The zebras walk for many miles. Many family herds come together to form one giant herd. They see other thirsty animals at the river too. In most parts of Africa, the rainy season is during the spring and summer months. Near the equator, there are two short rainy seasons each year. So at the watering hole, which is this big river, we see some wildebeests and an elephant who also want to drink some water. The zebras stay near the river until the rainy season comes again. Then the herds head back to the open plain to, to feast on new green grass. The young zebra is now a year old. She's able to take care of herself. Soon her mother will have a new baby. Then there will be another young zebra ready to run with the herd. Okay, the second book we're going to read is called Little Elephant's Trunk. All over.
over the land, there was great excitement. It was springtime, and springtime meant babies. Babies everywhere. <clears throat> the chimpanzee's baby clung tightly to its mother. The giraffe baby, the giraffe's baby nuzzled its mother's face, and the tortoise's baby struggled out of its shell. The hippo's baby took, took straight to the water. The zebra's baby hid in the long grass, and the springbok's baby ran and ran. The elephants had a new baby too. The whole family rumbled with pleasure as they gazed lovingly upon the little elephant. The little elephant took his first wobbly steps and fell. Something long and gray was, was tripping him up. He struggled to his feet and it happened again, but now his mother was calling. The herd was going to the river. What do you think that long uh, gray thing was that was tripping him up? The little elephant hurried alongside his mother, stumbling as he tried to keep up. He slipped down the river bank and fell, in, and fell with a loud splash into the water. He looked down. A face looked back at him, and something odd dangled from the middle of his face. The strange thing was a trunk. Then he realized he was looking at himself at his own reflection. What was the strange dangling thing for? The little elephant didn't know, but he did know that he was thirsty. The zebra was drinking the water, but little elephant couldn't do that. His trunk got in the way. He looked at the big elephants. They dipped their trunks into the water, put them into their mouths, and drank. Little elephant dipped his trunk into the water, put it into his mouth, and sucked carefully. The water was so good. Now the sun was burning down. The tortoise was shaded by his shell, but little elephant didn't have a shell. He looked at the big elephants. They were using their trunks to spray water all over their backs. This looked like fun. Little elephant trumpeted with delight as he joined the elephant shower, but now the herd was moving to their feeding ground on the far side of the river. <clears throat> Little elephant followed his mother, but the water was very deep and it kept getting into his trunk. In panic, he scrambled back to the bank. The, chip, the chimps swung across the rivers on vines. The little elephant didn't have any hands. He looked at the big elephants. They all had their trunks sticking up out of the water. They were breathing by snorkeling. So when they when the water gets so deep, then they just put their trunk up in the air so that way they can breathe. <clears throat> little elephant crashed into the water, thrust his trunk toward the sky and paddled happily to the other side. When he came out of the river, he sank into thick, deep mud. The mud felt good in the hot sun, and he longed to cover his body with it. The hippos with their short legs waddled in the mud, but the little elephant legs were too long. He looked at the big elephants. They picked up large dollops of mud with their trunks and threw them over their, bank, over their backs. Little elephant tried it. He splattered the cool mud all over himself. It felt wonderful. Here's the hippos. The herd was on the move again, pushing their way through the long grass. The grass was so high that Little Elephant couldn't see where he was going. He was afraid that he would lose his mother. The springboks leaped over the grass with their graceful legs as they followed their mothers. But Little Elephant's legs were thick and heavy. They were not made for jumping. He looked at the big elephants. They walked in a long line with Grandmother in the lead. Using its trunk, each elephant held the tail of the one in front. Quickly, Little Elephant lifted his trunk and grasped his mother's tail. Now he felt safe. 
So, so the herd doesn't get lost from each other. They grab each other's tails like this. <clears throat> At last, the elephants reached the feeding ground. Little elephants spotted some juicy looking leaves. But they were just out of reach. The giraffes with their long necks nibbled delicately at the leaves, but little elephant's neck was very short. He looked at the elephant, the big elephants. They curled their trunks around the leaves, tore them off, and put them into their mouths. After a little practice, he could reach the lowest leaves with ease. Delicious! The sun had started to dip below the horizon. It had been a long day for Little Elephant. He was very tired. He snuggled up close to his mother and felt something gently stroking him. It was her trunk. He curled his trunk around his mother's. What a very useful thing a trunk is after all, thought Little Elephant. The end. Nearby, something rustles in the in a patch of tall grass. It's a lion! Quack, quack, quack! He calls out one of the zebras. Danger is near. The zebras take off across the place. Nearby, something rustles in a patch of tall grass. It's a lion! Quack, quack, quack! Calls out one of the zebras. Danger is near. The zebras take off across the plain. 